guys, I'm Sparkmaster Neon, and today I'm joined with my friend Eli, and we're going to talk about setting goals. So, what setting goals to me is about planning ahead to change your future for the better. It's like maybe you feel trapped and you want to take steps to escape, or maybe you have your dream set. You know, last week we talked about dreaming big and aiming for the sky, it's about having those steps to get there, so that way you're not just jumping for it. Because if you jump for it, you might not make it. You know, the steps make it easier. You know, it's like stairway to heaven. That's why that's a term, right? <laughs> Part the song too. Yeah, it's it's about setting the groundwork for success to follow your passions and achieve your dreams. So Eli, what does setting goals mean to you? Basically, setting the goals is setting steps to better yourself. Mm -hmm. So you can say if you want the new job, you got to set those goals to grab that new job. Or if you want to work on a passion of yours, you have to set those goals to be able to do that passion mm -hmm. to complete it. And yeah, so just. That's what setting goals, or setting goals is to me. Yeah, yeah, I get you. So, now I want to talk about how to know when it's time for a change. Like, let's focus for this question on, like, instead of going for your dreams and your passion. If, let's say, you're in a bad situation, you feel trapped and you want to escape, how to know it's time to change that. You know, I usually go, I usually try to set my goals to get out of a situation as opposed to go for something big. Because going something big, I can set broader goals, but in the immediate problem in front of me is something I want to try and get out of earlier. So, like, I know it's time for a change when I can't take it anymore. When I'm doing something and I'm like, I can't do this anymore. This is, or I have a boss that's overwhelming me. Like, hey, why are you yelling at me for taking pictures of schedule? That's ridiculous. You know what? I need out of here. And I start setting goals to get out of there. Another, another reason for me to know it's time for a change is when I'm drowning in my own negativity or my depression. When work feels like the worst place to be. It's supposed to be somewhere fun. I mean, it's not supposed to be the most fun place. But, you know, you're at least supposed to be able to handle an eight-hour shift at most without ripping your hair out, you know? Like, like oh, I can't do this anymore. I hate this. I hate this. I hate it. I can't, that's when I know I need to change it. Or I hate for myself for doing what it is I am doing. If I'm doing something that I completely disagree with or I completely stand against and it goes against every standard and expectation I have and everything I stand for, I'm not going to want to do it. I'm going to want to change it, you know? But, you know, and sometimes time for change comes when you do want to aim for this guy, you know? It's like I am down here and I want to be up there. When you want to be up there, you have to start setting the goals to get there. The steps, as I talked about earlier. So, Eli, what are some things that tell you that, hey, it's time for a change? Well, uh, to better that answer out, I'm going to use an example. So, my freshman year of high school, I decided to play football. But I wasn't in the best of shape. So... That told me, hey, if I want to play football, I'm going to need to get into better shape. Like, or just in general. I mean, because walking up the stairs, you'd be out of breath. Or just, like, you feel tired all the time. But when you're in shape, you're more energized to do the things you want to do. Instead of being tired all the time. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, when, when you want to do something, but you can't do it. So, you want to change something about yourself to achieve it. Exactly. I get you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, another thing I want to talk about is, you know, you, you've decided, hey, I want to make this change. You don't want to just jump, take a leap of faith and go for it. But sometimes we get impatient and we do. So I wanted to talk about a time when I had. I had decided, you know what? I can't take this anymore. I can't just sit through this and wait it out until my goals get me where I want to be. So, like, when I got out of high school... I was sick in high school, and I wasn't feeling well, and I felt pressured to do community college. I felt like that was the thing to do. You know, if I wanted to achieve something of my, make something of myself in life, I had to go to college because higher education means a higher job, right? But I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't feeling well. I wasn't determined to get it done. And I didn't, just honestly, I wasn't feeling it is probably the best way to say it. And so when I got there, I couldn't drive, and my friend who was giving me rides was like, hey, I don't feel like going to class today. You want to just skip? And me, not feeling well and not really feeling class either, was like, yeah, sure. Let's go watch anime at my house. My parents aren't home. We'll just skip the day. So obviously, 
I was paying finance, I was on financial aid and paying for these classes myself, and I was obviously failing them because I wasn't attending it. And honestly, I was just, I was falling. And I was falling, I was falling, and it just, it affected me for years to come. Like, I was like, how am I supposed to get this debt paid? How am I supposed to do that? This and that. And I was lucky enough to have, like, my grandma who split it 50-50 with me, and then I paid her back interest-free over time. But honestly, I took a break. I paid my loans off. And I'm just starting to go back, and I'm serious about it this time. And it's going well. But just making that decision to go right away before I was ready to do it was, it just, I was taking a leap of faith and I was falling. I wasn't, I didn't have a parachute. I just didn't have any foundation to stand on. So it was just a bad choice. And I should have probably set those goals and figured out what I wanted to do and strove for the victory there instead of just going for it without thinking it through. So Eli, what was the time when you made a decision and it you paid for it because you didn't think it through and had to face the consequences? Well, there was a time in my life when I just quit my job spontaneously because I was just sick and tired of it. And I didn't have a backup plan for that. So I just quit, had no backup job, and I was basically jobless for six months. So I was, uh, you know, paying for bills that I couldn't really even afford anyway because I had no money, no job. And then um, I finally, six months later, was able to actually get a better job and uh, lift myself up out of that. Now, not all the way, but a lot better than without having a job. So that, that's, that's one time I yeah. went through something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always good to make sure you have that foundation because otherwise, you know, you're like, I can't breathe. What do I do? I don't know what to do. I don't have anything. But yeah. Exactly. I felt choked for like yeah. six months. Uh -huh. And then it gets better with time as every time heals all wounds. Unless you're dead. But hey, some, some miracle science may happen. But, <laughs> but like, you know, just make sure you're covered before you take that leap of faith. And it's always better to set those goals. So that way you can get to where you want to be without just jumping forward or falling. I mean, sometimes you could get lucky. You could jump and you could grab that ledge. It could pull you up and you got it. But it's also, you'll be more qualified for it as well if you take those steps and you've applied yourself. And you'll feel that much more satisfaction when you achieve victory because you set these goals. Exactly. Now I want to give an example of a time where I felt trapped or I felt stuck and I set some goals and achieved what I wanted to do. Now, about two years ago, I weighed about 300 pounds. And honestly, I was still feeling sick after my gallbladder thing, so I figured maybe it's my weight. So I decided I was going to lose some weight. So I started planning steps. So what's an example of the time when you started putting steps in motion to get out of a situation or change something about yourself, Eli? Well, I'm going to go back to my uh, freshman year of high school. Um, when I was playing football, obviously, I, you, you guys, as you, I've told you already, I wasn't in the best of shape to play football. So in order to get into uh, the shape needed to play, I had to set some goals. So my goals were just to start eating more healthy, um, to work out more, because during the practice we didn't get all that time to work out half, most of the time because we were running plays. We did run a little, but most of the time we were just uh, running plays. Um, also, lastly, uh, I just decided to cut out all sugary drinks. Not including Gatorade, although I would dilute it with water. But just water and diluted Gatorade just was the way to go. And it, and it worked for the it worked overall. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, some goals I set to get out of that situation. Yeah, you're talking about goals. I probably should say some of my own. <laughs> yes, sir. Please. Um, yeah, so for losing weight, I didn't want to change my diet. I'm, I'm a little lazy. I didn't want to, and I didn't want to be like, I like, I like hamburgers, chicken, pizza. I'm specific. I'm very picky when I eat. So I didn't want to change that. So I was like, okay, I hear counting calories works. So first off, I'm going to try to count my calories. And so I went, I went online. I found a calorie count calculator, like recommended how much calories a day to have to lose weight. And I calculated it for a sedentary lifestyle, which is where you sit like me right now all day, no exercise, and still could lose weight because your body, natu your metabolism naturally burns the calories. So I calculated that, and I realized I averaged about 10,000 steps at work. So that's exercise. That's quite a bit of exercise, but I was calculating for the sedentary lifestyle because 
you don't want to eat too much, but you don't want to eat too little. So I found the bare minimum number. So I could go a little over because I was a little active and a little under in case I didn't reach it. But it was, it was a smaller number than any of the others. So honestly, I was going to reach it. Um, and so I was just very cautious about not going more than like 200 calories over or under. Because if you don't eat enough, you still won't lose the weight. You have to eat like right around that threshold. And I ended up losing 80 pounds in six months. And it really, it really paid off. Um, so next I want to talk, that leads me into my next thing in having the courage to take those steps. Like for me, you know, I was trying to reach those caloric values. And if I ate too much, like let's say I ate my maximum by 4 p.m. I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to make myself go to bed early because I'd rather not starve myself. Because I would legitimately go hours on end being hungry, not really, I wouldn't say starving, because naturally, I told myself, I've already eaten once today, I mean, it's not the end of the world, I've met my caloric intake, so even though I'm hungry, you know, there's, I was thinking, I mean, to bring it dark, I mean, I have a negative mindset anyway, I was thinking, there's starving kids in Africa that eat less than half of what I had for breakfast, so I'll be fine, I will survive, and I'd literally not eat, I'd tell myself, no, I had the courage to go through with what I was planning, because I didn't want to throw it off. And plus, to me, it was like a science experiment. So I was like, if I do this, it'll mess up my data. So I was determined not to go over too much and not to go under too much, so that way I would make what I needed. Let's say I went under, I'd down like, I'm like, okay, I need something really quick. It's a lot of calories. So I would be, because I was too far under, so I'd go grab like Chips Ahoy or something, and I'd have like 10 cookies, because I'd calculate the calories per serving size. And I mean, he'd look at me after eating a bag of cookies and go, I thought you were on a diet. I was like, I did too, but honestly, I still am. Isn't that great? But yeah, so what were some hardships you faced when you were trying to get fit for football? Well, some hardships I faced were uh, basically the weekends, because the weekends, it, I was never at school uh, um, because, you know, I was home, and I couldn't work out really that well because I didn't have a gym to go to, because during high school, all, I only worked out at the school. So I couldn't really work, I mean, I could have worked out, but I really didn't want to I didn't like I don't like running outside so I didn't want to do that and another problem I faced was on the weekends was hanging out with friends because when you hang out with friends no one wants to work out I mean some people do but most people don't they just want to hang out watch TV play video games whatever eat all food go out to eat all that sort of stuff so that was a lot of hardship to face but I ended up overcoming it um, and was able to um, be successful in uh, football. So, yeah. Yeah, it's about staying true to the plans you set and executing them and finding success through them. Exactly. Now, it's not guaranteed success. You know, it's not like we found the magical equation to make everything you ever wanted happen. But it's, it's, it helps you to achieve them and it gives you a better opportunity to. It, it really does help as opposed to just trying to go through and be like, I got this, I don't need to plan. Because that can have dangerous consequences. And it is honestly, it can be a very negative thing. That, and you might have to face some very dark times. Because you jump to conclusions instead of planning it out. Yeah. Exactly. So now I want to do a hypothetical, per se. And I got, I got a paper and pen right here. And we're going to plan it out on the fly for you guys. Now a very common one that I've found is having a bad work environment. And wanting to get out of it. So I'm going to write bad work environment. Or bad work. I'm going to paraphrase it real quick. So for me, some things I might do is figure out an ideal alternative. See if there's a possible solution for it. Make an, I mean, and like go to job websites or something and see if there's an, a possible way you could get a job like that. And then if not, you can make a new place to work. Become an entrepreneur. You know, nowadays you can make a job of anything if you're creative enough. Go for gold. Don't let negativity hold you back because you can do anything you put your mind to. All you have to do is put the steps in action and implement it. All you can do is try. If you don't try, you can't succeed. And if, if you set these goals to help you apply yourself and make it work, then you're more likely to succeed. So, Eli, what are some ways that you think would help someone in a bad work environment? Well, some ways to help out with that would be try to look for the best 
in that job. So try to look for a good coworker you're close with or try to find a part of the job that you like doing because if you find the good in that, then it will make the job a lot less bitter per se. Mm -hmm. And just find the silver lining when it comes to that because you want to you want to um, deal with that job the best you can if you can't find a new one. Yeah, that positive perspective we talked about a couple weeks ago. Exactly. And, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I think that covers it. You know, that's just, that's just a start. It's something to work on. But those are definitely some starting foundationary ideals that you can work on if you're in a bad work environment and you want out. And you can start figuring out some other things that maybe you, as a unique person who has your own unique perspective, can figure out. And, like, maybe you're in a situation that can be remedied by something else. Like, maybe you don't need to lose the job. Maybe there's a way to change the work environment without leaving the job. Those are some other goals. Like maybe you can do this, this, or this and change that. Yeah. But yeah, I think, I think that covers setting goals very well. I mean, I, I, I don't have anything more else to add on. and I think, we did, I think we covered the topic pretty well. But if you, you guys have anything to add, please post it in the comments below. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we love, to, we love to interact with you guys. Be it on Facebook, on Twitter, on... Um, Instagram, and especially here on YouTube, you know, it's right, it's right down there, just scroll down, leave a comment, you know, interact with us, and the links are all in the description. Um, so, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up, if you want to see more, you can subscribe and hit the notification bell, and there's two settings to that, you can do personalized, and you'll see some of our things, or you can do all, and every time we post a video, you'll see it, you know, and you can leave the comments, like we just said, and, um, I can't encourage that enough. That's I love to hear back from you guys. I love feedback. I love being able to build off of that feedback and you know strengthen our channel as a whole. Anyways, I'm Spark. I'm Sparkmaster Neon. He's Eli Trench Runner. And as always, shine bright and live a phoenix tale.